These are the Valiant, I think they call them the Triads, uh, which is funny because, well, I suppose it's all to do with their logo again, so even more of uh, the same stuff. CTS Pots, Super Switch, and that is a military grade capacitor. I mean, that's pretty, pretty cool. This is a great guitar. And I, I can often tell at a glance, first, first impressions are absolutely everything. I can tell at a glance if a guitar is gonna be good or great or not. And I thought it would be interesting if I looked at this guitar and talked through what I saw at the Birmingham Guitar Show when I first set eyes on this instrument. And it truly is incredible. And I knew straight away. So uh, let's you know, dig into this thing. I'm gonna take the neck off and talk about various specs and bits and pieces. And uh, yeah, hopefully you're gonna find this interesting. For many years, I did not pay attention to what other people were doing in my industry, in, in the industry of making uh, boutique custom guitars. Uh, I regret that now through looking at what other people are doing, through understanding what they're doing, you can build on that and learn and grow as a builder, as a maker, as a creator. And I'm enjoying focusing on other builders and I'm hoping that you're enjoying seeing these videos as well. So this is me having a very, very good look at the Valiant Guitars Soothsayer. It's got some secrets and some tricks and some very, very interesting bits and pieces. So, come on then, let's have a look. On the face of it, we've just got, emphasis on just, a Strat-inspired, Super Strat, Strat-type instrument. Uh, one volume, one tone, so there's uh, not the three knobs we expect. And uh, as you walk up, the first thing you see is the finish. and. Uh, that has an impact, but it's not generally what I'm thinking about. I often say that the, uh, the last 5% of work that a luthier does on an instrument is the first thing that the client sees and is therefore far more important and deserves far more than 5% of the time. And, and that is the, the final finish. So, well, it generally is the final finish. And on this guitar, we've got this uh, relict uh, feel, which well, a lot of you are not fans of it. And uh, you can tell me whether you think this has been done sympathetically or realistically or, or what. And I, I don't particularly care about that. The, the, the lacquer checking on here is, well, visually very impressive. And uh, on this guitar, uh, it looks like, and... Uh, I've since confirmed it with the, uh, with the luthiers. Uh, this has been hand cut with a scalpel blade. This is not a force checked finish using nitro lacquer and uh, temperature changes to see what happens. It's deliberately and carefully done to get a particular look and feel. But that isn't even the thing that impresses me most. Uh, obviously, good quality hardware. You can see at a glance whether the hardware is nice. And this is a, a Goto 510 with the intelligent choice of uh, pressed saddles, I'm assuming steel. Uh, this instrument has been designed with a vintage feel and tone, and those saddles do make a difference. Uh, the inlays are an impressive design and are obviously immediately visible. I particularly love how the triangle design points both ways at the 12th fret. I personally, without any thought, would have had both of them pointing uh, in the same direction as each other and as the rest of the, uh, the inlays. Uh, it would be pretty cool if you had the, the design going towards the 12th fret and then from, from both ends. So. Uh, all the uh, triangles pointing up towards the first fret from the 22nd, 24th, and down. Uh, the logo is, is gorgeous, and, you know, 
it's a very, very well designed logo and it fits through the whole thing. And you can see the utter precision with which these geometric shapes have been made. And yes, there is CNC involved uh, patently, but uh, as we all know, a, uh, an inlay, specifically an inlay made in wood, uh, these things require a lot of handwork and a lot of time. Even though the inlays are one of the first things that you see, uh, what I'm talking about is a little bit more subtle than that. These tuners speak of a, a luthier who is really considering what they're doing. And uh, you can see the two dots on the side. That's a, a bit of a branding decision on the part of Graftech, who have designed and created these amazing ratio tuners. Uh, each one of these tuners is geared to work with a particular gauge string and uh, every half turn is a semitone. Every full turn is a tone of that string. So the low E string, that tuner is set just to work with that. They take a little bit of getting used to. I do like them, but uh, they make everything very interesting. We go down to the, uh, the control knobs and this is actually what totally grabbed me and, uh, and made me very, very happy when I was uh, standing in front of this guitar before I even picked it up and noticed that it was incredibly lightweight. You've got a, a V and a T, a volume and a tone marked in there. The V has the same shape as the triangle. It's got the same sort of angle as the triangle that uh, uh, Valiant have used here. And uh, the, the little point saying where you are in your control that triangle also matches the logo and uh, the shape that they're using. It is so special. The uh, scratch plate is a different design. It's new. It's not too derivative of uh, what everybody's thinking about. The position of each of the, uh, each of the screws here is very, very precisely and carefully done and fills me with joy. Now, spoke wheel, spoke wheel truss rod adjustment. Uh, a lot of people have an issue with this and they're not particularly easy to install. There are extra steps. This is a dual action truss rod I've uh, since found out. I love how it is inlaid into the, uh, into the fretboard here. Uh, incidentally, the fretboard and the inlays in the fretboard, those materials are mirrored in the hand inlaid and uh, custom made by Valiant Guitars uh, control knobs, uh, which is a, a level of detail that I, I particularly appreciate. Uh, the way that this spoke wheel is installed into the guitar makes me happy. The, uh, the cutaway there gives you more access to the tool that you're going to use to poke in there and adjust your truss rod. And uh, certain narrow-minded luthiers that I have met over time have, and I quote, stated, and I need to be sure that you know that this is a quote, not my feeling, have said, and I quote, do not put a truss rod key in the case with the guitar because you don't want your customers messing with the guitar. You want them to give it back to you so that you can make a little bit more money off them. And frankly, most people are too stupid to adjust the truss rod anyway and shouldn't be trusted with it." End quote. I think that that is total bullshit. I've spent my life trying to train and teach people that actually guitar building in general is not that difficult. Uh, it just takes a little bit of precision and practice. The same thing goes with setup. And Valiant have, well, they've chosen to do something else. Hey, you can win this guitar. Forgot to mention that, could be yours. So as well as having easy access to trust rod adjustment, and hey, wood moves and needs to be adjusted, we've got a very, very cool, fully adjustable, easily adjustable nut. Now these things are somewhat contentious, much like uh, Trev Wilkinson's roller nut that I have uh, come around on. Now, there's a video out there of me saying that I really don't like them. They have more moving parts than the average nut, but 
through this choice of material, and Valiant have chosen bell bronze, I, I am sold. The, the prime function of a nut is to transfer string energy into the guitar uh, as, as quickly and as easily as possible. And having gaps underneath these adjustment screws feels like a bit of an own goal. The reality is though that uh, most nuts on most guitars are made out of far less solid material. And as long as you've got a fine enough thread on each of these screws, and they do here, you've got as much, if not more, contact and material and mass than you would have with, say, a bone uh, nut or one of these composite plastic things, for example. So it's not actually diminishing. It is giving you the full adjustment that you require or that, you know, could be required, argue in the comments, while also improving tone. The other thing is with a, with a plastic nut or a bone nut or something like that, it is a different material to the frets and there is a sonic difference to how a fretted and an unfretted note works. Oh, interesting. I hadn't looked at this properly. Of course, so where a cross is in the middle, there's uh, a bit where there's no, no gap, but that moves so smoothly. And as I said, a very fine thread, so we don't have huge amounts of movement. And the beautiful thing is it's non-sticking material and uh, very well finished. And uh, the trim is returning to tune all the time. The only change I would make on this actually is I would personally round these edges off just a little bit. You don't tend to, with the palm of your hand, hit that area of the nut, but if you do, that's not that bad. Now, over the years, I've considered making exactly this type of nut. It's a, an ostensibly great idea, but the issue always comes when you start thinking about, A, the, uh, uh, the complexity of it, will it collect dust, etc., and gum up over time? Do you even want your customer, uh, the, the, the guitarist, to be able to adjust the nut? Uh, is it required to adjust the nut? Think of a zero fret. You never adjust those. So again, let me know in the comments what you think of that. I, I'm, I'm in two minds over all of these questions. The, the material has always come to me as a bit of an issue. That was a terrible sentence. And bell bronze is lovely because it, it's actually, it has self-lubrication kind of qualities. It helps the string to move. And I've been playing this guitar quite a lot recently and uh, the tremolo works perfectly. We're talking about gauged files and we spend, we all spend a lot of money on these things so that each slot is perfect. Uh, these slots in this nut are not so deep that the string is binding uh, and it's a soft V so there is a curve at the bottom of, uh, of, the, of each slot. It's just been very, very well done. So here's a trick. If you want to improve the resonance of your bolt-on neck guitar, tighten these screws up and, until the, where it feels like it should be and you don't really want to put much more pressure on and then loosen each one of them just a quarter of a turn. Uh, it genuinely sounds counterintuitive, but improves everything and you will actually be able to physically hear a difference. I have completely forgotten who taught me that, but I do remember that they were a, uh, a repair person with about 30 years experience and uh, they would have people bring their instruments in for, can you hear the dog sort of just shaking in the background? Uh, they would bring their uh, instruments into this guy for the magic touch. He would take it out the back, do that, and two minutes later walk out and the instrument just sounded better and the musicians genuinely uh, thought he had, I don't know, uh, a demon chained up downstairs or something that he could uh, use to instill a little bit of magic in the instrument. What can I say? 
Okay, so uh, made in the factory, hand wound. Uh, these are the Valiant, I think they call them the Triads, uh, which is funny because, well, I suppose it's all to do with their logo again. So even more uh, of the same stuff. CTS Pots, Super Switch, uh, not sure who made that, but uh, it's probably a Shala, I suppose. And that is a military grade capacitor. And uh, I mean, that's pretty, pretty cool. I suppose the only weak link in my mind, and potentially in uh, that of some of you, is uh, barrel jacks have a, a reputation, I'm not entirely sure if it's uh, uh, earned or not, for not lasting too long, but it's an easy replacement. And of course the cavity is completely shielded. I'm surprised not to see more shielding paint, uh, shielding tape on the back of the scratch plate, but uh, hey. I haven't had any issues with uh, noise on this guitar, so not required, obviously. This is a massive cavity, and uh, I don't have a problem with that. Let me know in the comments what you think. People, uh, again, have various ideas about tone and cavities and controls and, and all of this stuff. Uh, I think anything that uh, reduces the weight without compromising the strength of the guitar and this guitar is nice and strong, is uh, yeah, to be applauded. Strong opinions loosely held. I am more than happy to have you change my mind. Tell me I'm wrong, teach me something, and I will flip-flop like a seal on a beach. And this is where we start talking about uh, Valiant and, and where they've come from. Uh, the company is very new founded essentially in 2020, COVID, yay, uh, they're in Ukraine. Uh, so a few years later, uh, their world got turned upside down with the war with Russia, which is still ongoing. Uh, if you haven't yet checked it out, uh, I did a, a live streamed uh, build raising money for the uh, uh, Red Cross Ukraine appeal. And that was a very interesting uh, instrument that I built, that we built, it was essentially collaborative. Uh, and through all of this, Valiant have very rapidly uh, built up a reputation for impeccable guitars, built to a very, very, very high standard at a really good price. So, yeah, don't forget, this could be yours. Check it out on DGD. Uh, now, yes, there we go. Look at me getting all distracted and stuff. I obviously need more coffee in my system. The interesting thing though is that uh, the two luthiers in charge essentially are a pair of brothers one of whom has spent 30 years in uh, I think it was 30 years maybe 20 uh, in the aeronautics industry uh, machining to high tolerances uh, metals and, and they're bringing that knowledge and expertise to this guitar uh, this nut is a perfect example and the way that it has been thought out is a perfect example. You can now actually commercially buy nuts like this. I'm not sure they would be as good as this is. Something else that struck me when I picked the guitar up was just how stable the neck was. And I felt it was a relatively futtle, subtle, subtle, wow. It was a relatively subtle feeling, but I felt that there must be a massive carbon fiber stiffening rod inside this neck. Uh, it's a single slab sawn piece of uh, rock maple and it should have more movement in it. And that's not the case. They've got titanium stiffening rods down this neck. And again, I've considered doing this and it is something that you can buy now to do. I'd never really considered it. I personally thought that carbon fiber as a strength to weight ratio would probably be better and give you a more stable neck than titanium. I need to get me some titanium now. I'm just genuinely impressed by, by a lot of these things. Hell, I need to pick up the camera now. I, I needed to put it down. I need to pick it up and show you what's going on on the back. You have the uh, Made in Ukraine stamp and these ratio tuners are locking as well. It's got a very, very nicely carved uh, neck, which has also been uh, aged. This is something that I expected to see when I turned it around, and that is an all access uh, comfort carve neck. And every single facet of the guitar has been very, very nicely rounded over. Also uh, strap locks because, hey, that's a bit of a no-brainer nowadays. The, the branding continues. The, uh, the, the back plate there is 
very, very attractive. But the branding continues. You've got a serial number and the logo uh, on the uh, access port where you've got a barrel jack. But I love how they've carved away this relatively pleasing shape at the uh, bottom quadrant of the guitar to one, hide the barrel uh, so that it doesn't ruin the lines of the guitar, but two, it's pointing it somewhere where it makes more sense, especially if you've got a, uh, a right angle jack to uh, run the jack over your strap. And it's just a lot of thought. A lot of thought has gone into this and it makes me happy. That amount of thought and concentration brings me back to myself and, and you have potentially been watching uh, as I update you on, on my personal situation and, and, and everything that's happening in, in my life and, and, and all that jazz. And one of the recent occurrences was that we decided to close down VintageToolShop.com and it was my baby. I absolutely loved that shop. I loved the process. I loved the tools. Uh, I'm going back to being just a normal tool collector. Oh my gosh. But just a few weeks after making that decision, I am already feeling the benefits of having a little bit more headspace, a little bit more time to think and to prioritize what I'm doing and what I'm thinking about. And uh, genuinely, genuinely, I don't need any qualification for this next statement. I have been spending a lot of time thinking about my guitar building, thinking about our guitar building tools, thinking about the issues that I've got and the problems that I find and the difficulties I have with guitar building. And I have designed in collaboration with my team at Crimson some incredible tools that are, no word of a lie, going to change your life. Uh, they are going to save you hours and hours of just boring, uncomfortable work. I am so excited. So, hey, watch this space. But um, none of that would have been possible if I hadn't closed Great Guitar Build-Off, if I hadn't closed the Vintage Tool Shop and delegated some of my other responsibilities to other people so that I can sit and just exist and think. This guitar is an example of somebody who has sat and thought. People often talk about music as being a great commonality between people, and that is true. Music brings people together. The people who facilitate the making of music, guitar builders, we are in a similar fashion, all passionate about the instruments. You don't go into guitar making to make a million dollars, unless you've got two million to start with. This is not a a business to start if you want to make a lot of money. This is something that you do because you are passionate about it. And that passion comes through in what Valiant are doing, especially given the situation uh, that Ukraine is in right now and what it was born out of. I, ca I can see the thought, I can see the design, I can see the, the mind behind this instrument. And I could see that uh, after just looking at it on a stand at a guitar show for a half a minute and I knew I wanted to explore more and I knew looking at it that I would find some secrets inside. The pickups are fantastic, of course. The potentiometers are CTS, etc. The capacitors are military spec capacitors. All of these things combine into a guitar that I just know sounds amazing. I just know it's going to play incredibly. And I knew there was going to be something else hidden and I was going with the, uh, the titanium inside the neck. I knew that there would be something special that I would find out as I explored this instrument. And that titanium is a perfect example of that. Something else that peop people have said to me in the past is, Ben, you, you, you're doing a review of a guitar without playing it. And we're going to get to a demo. You might have already heard it in this edit. I don't need to play a guitar in order to know it's going to be great. I don't need to hear it through an amplifier in order to know that it's going to be great or at least have the potential to be absolutely amazing. The final setup on this is perfect. The wiring is perfect. The sound is genuinely incredible. But that's not why you buy a boutique guitar. You can take almost any instrument and get those same results out of it. You buy a boutique guitar. You buy a high-end 
instrument like this for the mind of the individual behind it. Crikey, I didn't even mention, like, here I am wrapping up. You've got the other part of the all access is that curve there that uh, it gives you far more access than you get and is incidentally where I always thought PRS should put their uh, scoop that's on the front of the neck. That particular element of the PRS design has never made sense to me. Uh, anyway, I have got to say thank you for watching. If you have yet to subscribe, then please do so. Uh, if you want more deep dives into this sort of uh, uh, guitar and, and uh, then yeah, hey, let me know if you would rather more build videos. Uh, let me know. This, this whole thing is in a state of flux and I'm very interested in your opinion. So thanks for watching. I'll, uh, we'll crack on with the demo now. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.